Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for August 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, check out my blog, and if you would love to learn astrology for your own personal development or to do it as part or all of a professional offering, then check out my Astrology Apprenticeship Program. And if you'd love to be a coach, Sages tend to make fantastic coaches. I have lots of people with strong Sag energy in my courses. If you'd love to be a coach and help people to reach their goals, then check out my coach certification and online business course. So what is going on in this month of August? The highlight of this month for all signs is the eclipse cycle that's continuing, the two eclipses that we have. So we're going to go into more detail about where you early, middle, and late degree placements of Sagittarius can expect to see shifts and reshuffling of energy from these eclipses. I'm also going to talk about some other aspects um, and transits that are going to be occurring in the general astrology that will affect everyone, some things that you need to know about. So when we have eclipse time, which really this boom really happens twice a year, and we can feel the eclipse changes before and after the actual eclipses, and also we're moving along an eclipse cycle that's a story, it's a longer term story. So this eclipse cycle of the Leo Aquarius eclipses started at the beginning of 2017, and they move well into 2019. The last time we experienced this same reshuffling of energy in these certain areas of our charts was in 2008 to 2009. So if you think back to what was changed in your life during that time, you will start to have a better understanding of the ways that things will probably come in this time. Now, it doesn't mean they'll happen the same way. And I have had some questions since I started talking about um, this last month for the July horoscope. I had some questions about since in 2008, we had the market crash. People were asking and very concerned, obviously, that that affected so many people in, in such a, a very challenging way. And some people were concerned and were asking, does that mean that that's going to happen again? Okay, so I think that the market crash happened. Of course, there's always a culmination of factors, but that, that was a predominant effect of Pluto moving into Capricorn. Pluto, the atomic bomb, coming into Capricorn, the financial and other business markets, with a boom, literally, um, or, or really a blowing up of the boom that was, um, I think that's more of a Pluto uh, moving into Capricorn thing. So I'm not forecasting that these eclipses are going to bring um, a, a downfall um, in the finance, financial sector the same way we experienced it then. That being said, there, there was restructuring that started then that had a relationship to this um, Aquarius Leo cycle that I do think will come back around and we can already see that it's been happening. And that has to do with a restructuring of, of large organizations and a reshuffling around of people's loyalties and goals as far as societal norms versus individual passions. You know, there's a huge story being told with this eclipse cycle of a divergence from the mainstream of um, societal understandings and, and a, a pushing into this um, creative individual passion and how you can use your creative individual passions to help the group as a whole. You know, so this is a story that I think was prompted um, in some way or seemed to be prompted by the economic collapse because many people who had done the right thing, did what people told them to do, invested their stuff, you know, their money in these certain places, and then they lost everything, made people question what people tell you to do and started to live a little bit more, um, you know, with, with a passion and purpose focus rather than a general what society thinks is a good idea. So that definitely will continue. Um, and there might be some minor market corrections, but I don't think that we're gonna have the same thing that we had then. Okay, so what's up for Sag? So we've got on August 7th, we've got this lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses bring coming to fruition, a closing out, an ending, a coming to fruition or a completion of a certain aspect of life. Um, often it can be very dramatic. It can be happy, happy tears or not good drama or all of it wrapped up into one, a very, a very dramatic ending or closing of a chapter. 
And then the solar eclipse brings the new energy. We can see the universal principle that energy is not created nor destroyed. It simply changes forms. We can see that principle very much at play in the eclipse times as something is closed out in favor of something being opened, that that same energy that is lost in one sector of life is opened up in another sector. So if you're going through changes and things seem like they're going away, then don't worry, there's going to be, that's, that space is going to be filled in. It always has to be filled in and it always will be filled in. So we'll talk first about what looks like it's being eclipsed out um, or shifted or having an ending or fruition, and then we'll talk about where, what it's gonna be filled in. Okay, so for the early degree placements, that means early Sag birthdays, probably November born, really we could group it as, um, maybe the first couple of days of December, or first you know, zero to nine degrees if you're watching for your rising sign. You all will experience this lunar eclipse on August 7th, the closing out of energy in your third house. Whenever I see an eclipse, a lunar eclipse occur in or near a third house, I have to have my now infamous discussion about um, being extra careful while you're driving, um, being extra careful. If you, if you still text and talk on the phone while you're driving, this please stop that because this is putting pressure on your, I mean, besides the fact that it's just a bad idea, um, but your, your, especially these early degree placements, your um, mobility sector has some pressure being put on it. Some people tend to have issues with their cars and stuff. Some people don't tend to have issues with their cars and their mobility. But whenever you have a lunar eclipse cycle moving into this sector of life, it puts that more under pressure. So um, when I had these eclipses occur during a cycle in the past, I had a snowy tree limb smashed my windshield in my car, on, um, in my driveway. The branch just broke off laden with snow and broke my whole windshield. Um, I had, when I tried to roll down my window, it cracked into a million pieces. Um, and then someone who was sleeping um, hit into the back of my car while it was parked. Um, and I was in it. So that all happened during um, the lunar eclipse cycle in the third house. Now that's not saying that you're going to have that happen to you, but there is more energy around it. And so if you do a little bit of prevention, it can help things. So first of all, I have had people tell me, I actually had one person write that I saved their life by having this discussion about this, this placement because they, my words echoed in their head when they went to go to um, walk across the street and they were texting and they stopped and a car whizzed by would have hit them. So texting while walking, texting while biking, you know, any of these things where your mobility and you're talking and all that, try to do one thing at one time. Be more careful. Also look into getting windshield coverage or, or glass coverage on your car. Sometimes it's free. Um, I learned that by learning that I didn't have glass coverage and had to put out a boatload for these various glass things that happened during the eclipses. So um, you can ask your insurance provider how much it costs to get glass, you know, the um, glass coverage with a, with a zero deductible, because usually there's a high deductible on it, enough so that it would cover the cost of all of the repair. So you wanna to try to have a zero deductible. Okay, now many of you early degree placements might just have your communication or transportation devices go kaput and just end and you need to get new ones. If you can possibly hold off to get the new ones until the middle to end of September, that would be great. If you do have to buy something to replace your device or something like that in the meantime, if you can get an interim thing, that would be good. And if you have to buy something that is a permanent purchase, then keep your receipts um, and get the extra warranty protection because the odds are more likely that you'll have to take a trip back again. Like if you get a new phone um, in August because Mercury is going to be in retrograde while these eclipses are happening, um, it's more likely that you're going to have to go take it back again. And if you don't have your paperwork, you could, have, you know, it could cost you more. Okay. Now there are other ways that this can manifest. Um, neighbors, um, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, you know, relatives that aren't your parents or kids, basically. There can be notable events that occur with them. Endings, arguments, um, coming to fruition of a project you're working on with them, something like that. Um, and also a way of being where maybe you're traveling for business or a cycle where you're going to certain places for work that could end. So for the rest of you Sag 
uh, placements. So that's most of you. So all pretty much all the December born Sagis and then from, you know, 10 degrees on for rising. You're going to have this lunar eclipse, this ending, this completion, this coming to fruition in your second house of your finances. So this means that it's some, it's very likely that a way that you're making money now is going to change. But don't worry, because even though for some of you, you might all of a sudden have an ending to your income, then you'll be like, oh gosh, really need that money, right? It's very likely to be replaced with the solar um, eclipse. It's just coming in a different way than it was. The, the, there's a big story at play here with your individual finances and your con collective finances, like you and your spouse, you and your parents, you and your family, you and a business partner, um, something like that. So your individual finances are going to be affected, but it doesn't mean your total finances are going to be necessarily put off in a bad way. And you could wind up being much better. Sages tend to be very independent people, I know because I'm a Sag. And I have tons of planets in Sag. I'm very, very Saggy Sag. So I understand that you want to have your own thing going on and have your options and have your freedom, obviously, which is one of the most important things to a Sagittarius is that you have your freedom. And when you have your own income, you have more freedom because you don't have anyone telling you how you're going to spend it, etc. So there, there is a very, very big chance that you're going to have your own individual income shifted in a way that you're partnering with someone and now you're going to have to play by some different rules. But I do think in the long run, even though it's going to be a little bit of a, um, a shift mentally and otherwise for you, that it will serve to give you more freedom in the long run as long as you can restructure your idea of what freedom is. Okay, so definitely um, some shifts in your individual income could be the ending of an income stream or a way that you've been making money, could be the ending of a job, could be the um, ending of a client, you know, a big client or a major client. Could also be um, a closing out of something, a major material thing that you have, you know, something that you own, or a relationship to material things. Um, that's definitely another thing that's wor being worked at here is, you know, clearing out actual physical baggage. You know, if you have a lot of stuff that's kind of energetically holding you back, like maybe you're a Sag that wants to travel more, but your things, your possessions are tying you, binding you, you're kind of married to those, then there could be a breakthrough in that arena of your life. Okay, so let's talk about where this energy is opening up. For you early and middle degree placements, it's very likely you're going to have this energy open up in your ninth house. You middle and later degree placements, the middle degree placements are either gonna feel this in the eighth house or ninth house, the early degree placements are going to feel this um, in the ninth house and the later degree placements are more likely to feel this in the eighth house. Although your late degree placements could feel a little bit in the ninth house too. Okay, so we have our opening up this new moon, second new moon in Leo on August 21st. It's a solar eclipse. It has beautiful aspects with Jupiter and Saturn. Um, of truly magical new moon, truly magical openings going on. And I'll talk later about the general openings of what a new moon in Leo, like a solar eclipse in Leo can bring, because that's a little bit different than what I'm about to talk about here specific for Saggies. Um, but it's a fire sign, a fellow fire sign. So this eclipse could actually trine, meaning make a 120 degree angle to your Sag placement. So you wanna figure out what degree your Sag placements are, and if you have any within like 24 to 29 degrees, you're mo and that's any of your places, not just your sun or your rising sun, if you have your Mars or Mercury or Moon, between, we'll say between 24 and 29 degrees, but if it turns out to be like 23 or 22 degrees, you might also feel it too. That's going to be an extra benefit for you. You know, this is a very beneficial solar eclipse. It's a very easy, wonderful solar eclipse, um, especially for fellow fire signs. Okay, so the early and middle degree and possibly some late degree placements will experience this opening in your house of the ninth house, which is publishing, teaching, speaking, um, writing, getting a message out to people. It's, it's a spiritual and religious house. So for those of you who are involved with your spirituality in a deep way, opportunities to share that in a bigger way through teaching could come up. And in general, teaching and learning is um, a major focus. So a new teaching opportunity, a new writing opportunity, a new sharing opportunity 
could be for many of you new international travel opportunities or very long distance travel, even if it's within your same country. Um, but definitely there's this energy of more international openings, things coming up um, that really widen your experience. This could also be new perspectives, new viewpoints, um, stepping into new roles. You could start teaching in a different way. You could start some big um, learning program where you're getting educated on something that will expand your capacity to teach in the future. Okay, so some of you middle and most of you late degree placements are likely to have this new opening happen in the eighth house and it, with a flavor of the ninth house. So all these things I just talked about for the middle um, and early degree placements, you're very likely to have this flavor even, even as a late degree placement. But there's also this additional focus in the eighth house which has to do with powerful partnerships. Many, many, many a Sag is going to dig into this, as I was alluding to before, if you're, you're kind of closing out some of your individual financial story and opening it up into this collaboration state, okay, where you bring what you're bringing with other people who are bringing what they're bringing and you create these synergistic collaborations. Um, so powerful partners might show up at this time. One thing to note about this is that most of August has Mercury in retrograde and even the early part before the 12th when it goes retrograde is still in the shadow period. July 25th started the shadow period so then Mercury goes retrograde August 12th or 13th, depending on your time zone. It goes through September 5th, but it stretches, the post shadow stretches till September 20th. So if you have someone come in and want to collaborate with you, it's good to, to talk about those things in August, but if you can hold off into the middle to end September 20th and after, better, to actually make that commitment of what you're committing to, that would be better because with Mercury being in retrograde, even though you have this massive amount of new energy coming in and opportunities that are just wonderful and sizzling with possibilities, very exciting. You're not going to have all the information and you might, you know, Sagittarius have a tendency to just say yes, like before they even know what the whole sentence is. Yes, I want to do that. I feel it. I'm going to do that. And then they think about the problems and the other things that they should have checked into after the fact, right? I know I'm busting y'all, but I know I do it all the time. So I know you do it too. So hold off on your yes or give a conditional yes. Like yes, but let's talk about all of the details and then kind of get your, your realism glasses on, you know, and go through things with a fine tooth comb and have patience and, you know, have some people who are not as positive and optimistic as you look at the contract and look at the situation to see some things that you really should be factoring in. And then into September, if you can make your agreements, then um, you'll have more of the information that you really need. So those are the things that are most on my mind for Sag. Now I want to talk about these general transits, how the general eclipses in the Leo Aquarius polarity can look, and other dates that have notable transits that will bring up things that you'll definitely notice. So the eclipses definitely dominate the astrological scene for August for all signs, but there are other aspects that I want to talk about that will affect you as well, and this will affect all signs. Right from the beginning, we've got Jupiter in Libra, square Pluto in Capricorn. This is the third time that this has happened. The first time was November 24th of 2016. The second pass was March 30th of 2017, and here on August 4th, we have the final chapter. So this has been an ongoing saga having to do with the challenges of connecting with people in order to bring about something into the world. Um, Jupiter and Libra has to do with relationships. Pluto and Capricorn has to do with business and things in the outer view, the public eye. And a square is a, a conflicted um, uh, angle. So that means there's something to push through in order to get to the outcome. So um, the impetus lies in the aspect and also the blocks. You know, so that's what brings the frustration is that there's this pressure to join together and get something out into the world, but then the blocks and the challenges are also wrapped up in the transit. So there should be some resolution, some final conclusion here. One of the pieces is going to have to um, have to do with competition. You know, whenever we subscribe to the third dimensional belief in competition, there always creates this hamster wheel angst that you never really get out of. But one of my favorite teachers, Florence Scovel Shin, 
always says or said as I read her work, she's passed now a long time ago, um, there's no competition on the spiritual planes. And that's true. Infinite Spirit has a purpose for us that only we can fill. And you can take marketing data into consideration. You know, you can take third dimensional realities into consideration. But ultimately, what you do in this world has to do with you and Infinite Spirit and your purpose. So the more you can ease into that higher vibrational view of this, whatever you're merging together to do to bring out into the world, you're going to have a much better experience and much better outcomes. So even though I give you the dates of these transits, remember that you can always have the possibility to feel the energies in a manifestation before or after that date. Okay, so don't hang your hat too heavily on the dates that I give you. So also important to note that I am giving you um, information about specific transits as I always do, but you can get a more detailed write-up of the general transits that affect everyone when you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I send out a month early a written version of um, the summary of the energy of the month, to the month ahead along with some highlights. If you have signed up for my newsletter already and you're not getting it, I send it out every month early, like clockwork, um, usually a month early. So if you're not getting it, it's probably going into social promotions, um, um, events folder or something like that. So check in there, spam, check in there and move it back into your inbox um, so that you can get them in a timely basis. Okay, so we talked about the eclipses at length as far as the individual effects for the signs, um, but we do have general effects for the eclipses as well. The first one is on August 7th. It's a full moon lunar eclipse at 15 degrees of Aquarius. We're moving along this continuum that um, started at the beginning of 2017. That has to do with a reshuffling of energy in the arenas of large organizations, humanitarian efforts, internet-based projects, teams, groups, friendships, circles, you know, all, whatever kind of circles you find yourself in. That's all Aquarius. So some sort of... Um, of uh, reshuffling of energy. Some people will be focusing more in those realms and some people will be focusing more on their own individual desires against the societal norms, which we'll talk about when we, when we get over to the um, solar eclipse for later in the month. But this lunar eclipse is coming packing a lot of punch because the event also opposes Mars, which increases the likelihood of some sort of conflicted ending or a conflicted completion. Full moon eclipses tend to bring lots of drama, lots of emotion, and some sort of culmination, you know, an ending or something coming to fruition. But with that um, aspect with Mars, it could be a conflicted ending. There's also a simultaneous nice aspect with Saturn that could bring very um, positive and strong foundation for present and future security. And there's an additional trine with Jupiter. Anything having to do with a wonderful aspect with Jupiter always is going to bring more um, enthusiasm, more hope, more faith, um, and expanded outcomes. So we've got some sweet aspects um, on the 10th and 11th and 12th. Um, then on the 12th and 13th, depending on which time zone you're in, Mercury is going to go into retrograde, and that will be at 11 degrees of Virgo. Mercury goes retrograde three or four times a year, so we, we really spend half of our lives in one part of the retrograde transit, either the, the, the shadow period that occurs before or the shadow period that occurs after or the actual retrograde. You can look at my video called Mercury Retrograde if you do a search for Annie Botticelli Mercury Retrograde. I talk about the do's and don'ts and the understandings that it's important to carry. But basically, a lot of pressure is put on weak links that already exist with communication, communication devices, mobility, transportation devices. Um, so any weak links that are there are going to be turned up, you know, so old things that were swept under the rug as far as communication often just blow right out to be dealt with. And often things, people, ideas from the past roll in now for reconsideration. It's not always the best time to make the long-term decision if you can help it. So even though these eclipses and retrograde are going to bring some things right into the forefront, if you can wait until later into September, like at least mid to end September to, to really commit to to um, a longer term situation, that would be better because you're not going to have all the information. Okay, so we've got um, a nice aspect with the Sun and Saturn on August 13th that where your desires receive enthusiastic support. Um, the 15th we've got, and actually there's another aspect with Venus um, on the 24th. So there are two challenging aspects with Venus 
this month, the 15th and the 24th, that are going to bring, you know, some uh, tension either with self-esteem, aesthetics, appearance, romance, you know, your relationships in general of any kind or money. So there's pressure put on Venus this month and you'll see that come up in little or big ways. Then we have a nice aspect on August 20th with the sun trining Uranus. So sometimes sudden insights and exhilarating awarenesses or experiences could come in with that. On the 21st, we've got this very powerful new moon solar eclipse at almost 29 degrees of Leo. So this is the second new moon in Leo that we have, which adds a lot of power. Also new moon um, solar eclipses are like new openings in triplicate, just as full moons are closings, endings, drama, conclusions, three times as powerful as a regular full moon, the new moon eclipses have the opening energies and the new energies three times that of a regular new moon. And this is a beautiful new moon. We've got um, a beautiful aspect with Uranus, which brings you know more surprises, happy surprises, than we have um, a beautiful aspect with Saturn, which brings again this long-term stable factor, There's, which seems to be a theme this month, like certain things starting to, to, to click in for future security. And so when you have a solar eclipse, it's an opening. And when you have a solar eclipse in Leo, it has to do with openings in um, creativity. So anything having to do with children but for some people, their creative projects are their children. So whether you're conceiving a child or conceiving a creative idea, that process of conception to pregnancy to birth to child or project rearing is all dominated by Leo. So there's going to be lots of new openings there. And for people who already have children, new experiences and you know dimensions of parenting. Um, there's also energy in, associated with athleticism and acting, modeling, directing. Uh, fun hobbies, true love. Many, many, many people are going to enter new dimensions of romance with this aspect, um, which is really exciting. So we've got that on the 21st and on the 22nd, we have Mars in Leo trining Saturn and Sag. And again, this is a nice boost um, where action and outcomes blend beautifully. We've got a nice aspect on August 23rd to the 24th with Venus and Chiron, which shows that when we do emotional inner work in those places where we're wounded, it brings positive um, gains. On the 24th, so simultaneously with this nice aspect with Chiron, we have a square with Uranus. I, I alluded to this earlier when I talked about the, the difficult aspect with Venus on the 15th. When Venus squares Uranus, you know, the bringer of change in a feisty expression in Aries, you know, makes an uncomfortable angle to love, money, and aesthetics. So there's many ways that can look, you know. So definitely having the Venus in Cancer is going to promise emotional uh, jostling from this um, unpredictable Uranus energy. August 25th, Saturn goes direct at 21 degrees of Sag. This officially ends the break that we've had as Saturn was in retrograde. Saturn is a chop buster. That's what I always call Saturn. Saturn um, wants discipline, it's a taskmaster, and it wants organization and it wants hard work. And that type of energy doesn't blend well with Sagittarius, the sign that it's in, because Sag is all about free flowing and, you know, um, not being consistent and all of the things that we love about Sagittarius don't mix well with the energy of Saturn. So we've had a break from Saturn kind of forcing us to take these big Sag ideals and dreams and do the hard work, consistent work for bringing those dreams down into the third dimension. We've had a little break from that, but now the break is over. So for the rest of the year, we're going to have to get our nose back to the grindstone and take the daily steps to bringing the dreams into fruition. So, um, when Saturn moves through Sag, it's also a serious faith tester, you know, so we've got the rest of the year for Saturn to sort of weigh heavy on faith, but at the more you can stay connected to faith throughout this Saturn transit, um, the better it will be. And then we end off with a nice aspect with the Sun and Mercury, but that can also mean some powerful um, criticism, you know, the same aspects that can be something positive, like some um, 
bright news, you know, when the sun and mercury join together, they, they enhance each other's qualities. There could be some powerful news that comes in, but Virgo is also really critical. So there could be some harsh criticism that comes in too. So just keep your head up with that. So um, if you would love to have astrology, to learn astrology in a, in a visceral way, um, a way that helps you to blend more naturally with the um, planetary rhythms, then maybe you'll love to take my astrology apprenticeship program. You can see more about it on my website, anniehelpsyou.com. Click on work with me. Um, whether you want to use astrology for your own personal developments or to help your friends and family and yourself to understand karmic patterns, understand what your highest expression is in this lifetime and how you overcome the karmic patterns to step into that, even if you want to do it professionally, then check out my astrology apprenticeship program. If you'd like to be a coach, a wellness coach, a business coach, um, a spiritual coach of any kind, helping people to reach their goals, then maybe you will love my coach course, which is also enrolling. Um, and that's also combined with my online business course so that you can help create a presence online and develop your coaching business for online basis. So check that out, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also check out my husband, B.R. Newman's new tarot uh, reports for each sign. You can look him up, B.R. Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -N. I am Helios.com is his website. Um, so you can see what he says about your sign as far as the tarot report and that supplements what I've just shared with you. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.